Today we uh, received uh, consent from uh, the patient who was brought to our hospital who was uh, attacked in the Pacific Ocean on Sunday afternoon. Uh, her name is Maria Korchmaros. That is Maria, first name M-A-R-I-A, -A. last name Korchmaros, K-O-R-C-S-M-A-R-O-S. We do have a photo of Ms. Korchmaros that Kelsey has passed around to the reporters. She's a 52-year-old female. She's a Canadian-American, Southern California resident. She is a professional uh, fitness instructor and personal trainer in Corona, California. She is married to Alex Korchmaros. She has three children, uh, ages 16, 22, and 24. She has been a triathlete for 30 years. She actually completed an Ironman around 2008. Uh, Mrs. Korchmaros was on a routine swim swimming approximately one and a half miles, about 500 feet off the uh, coast of, of Newport Beach. According to her family, uh, she was uh, swimming along the buoys uh, off the coast of Newport Beach that define the safety swim zone, uh, where many triathletes uh, train quite frequently. She was training for a half Ironman, which is scheduled to take place on July 10th in Canada, where she uh, attends an annual family reunion. At approximately 4.46 p.m. Pacific time, Ms. Korch Mrs. Korchmaros was brought to our trauma center. Uh, the injuries appear to quite definitely be from that of a shark bite or consistent with a shark bite. I'm going to let our trauma surgeons, our medical director of trauma and our uh, director of orthopedic surgery talk about the details. Uh, our medical staff will definitely confirm for you that uh, the patient's physical fitness was a critical element of her ability to survive what was most definitely a terrifying experience for Mrs. Korchmaros. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Humberto, Humberto, Dr. Humberto Sari, our medical director of trauma surgery, uh, and also Dr. Philip Rotter, our director of orthopedic surgery and medical director of orthopedic trauma surgery. Uh, and then we'll take questions afterwards. Dr. Sari. Hi. Um, so Maria was brought in as a critical trauma. Um, she. Uh, uh, she was stabilized in the trauma room by the, by the team there. Um, she had extensive lacerations uh, to her right arm and uh, multiple lacerations extending in what appeared to be a semicircular pattern from her upper torso with uh, open chest wound and multiple rib fractures um, extending down to her pelvis. Um, she also had uh, disruption of the abdominal wall. So. Uh, the team stabilized her initially in the trauma room and then took her to surgery for several hours um, where they did a, a thoracotomy, which is repair the lung injuries, uh, make sure there was no uh, injuries to the lung and to the uh, chest wall, uh, make sure there was no injuries to the heart, um, repaired the abdominal wall, looked in the, in the abdomen, make sure there was no significant injury in the abdomen. And then with Dr. Rotter, um, uh, repaired the, uh, the arm injuries. And uh, she, she was then sent to the ICU uh, where she was uh, further stabilized and I believe yesterday was extubated and um, is doing remarkably well at this point. Dr. Rotter, did you want to come up and talk about it? Happy to okay, great. So at this time, we'd be happy to take any questions that you have for our surgeons. Or so you said there was a, and maybe if you don't mind, Dr. Sorry, stepping back up or up whomever. Up. Um, you said there was a, uh, a semicircular pattern, looked like a bite mark. How big was it? Were there multiple? Haven't measured the exact dimension, but it extends from upper torso area down to the pelvis. And there's multiple lacerations, like one would expect perhaps from multiple teeth. Was it front and back? It was uh, beginning in the back, extending around the front, continuing around to the side. And Does Pelvis does, buttock area. Does it look like one bite over that area, though, or multiple bites, or could you tell? I'm not. I'm, I'm no forensic expert, but Phil. It, it, it looks like one bite. So one big bite. Can you describe what her arm looked like coming in when she was delivered to you? Was her arm shredded? Was she in danger of losing her arm? Uh, when she arrived, she did have a tourniquet on. Um, she was not bleeding from the arm extensively because of the tourniquet, but there was very significant injury to the 
muscles, skin uh, throughout much of the upper arm. Was she able to speak or explain anything to doctors? Uh, yes, she was remarkably calm uh, when she arrived. What did she tell you? Uh, I was not in the room right at that time, but she was speaking with people initially. Okay. It was mentioned that her health had something to do with her being able to kind of recover to some extent. Could you talk about that? She, she had significant open wounds uh, on the arm, on the upper body, on her pelvis. Um, those are wounds that would have bled a lot. Um, and she was able to, to tread water and uh, hold her own until help arrived. So that, that's pretty remarkable. Did she describe the attack to you guys? Did uh, she say? I, I have not gone into a lot of detail with her. She, she remembers it. Um, I'll let her describe that if well, she wants she's to. not talking. So it, 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 uh, Dr. Sorry, did she say anything to you about the attack? Just very sudden, wasn't quite sure. You know, just felt something hit her and then um, just put her arms up and started, started treading water and asking for help. Did she see it? No. Did she believe it was a shark? Had she used those words? You'll have to ask her. If lifeguards were not nearby in a boat, do you think this would be a different outcome? Possibly. Is there anything you do different knowing or suspecting it was a shark attack? Was there anything you did different in the treatment if it was something, you know, some other form of trauma? No, a laceration is a laceration. You know, an open chest wound is an open chest wound. It's, a, it's, it's an immediately life-threatening injury. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just like tying a shoe. You just tie a different shoe. Are, are there any, uh, going forward, any infection issues to worry about? Since Obviously, of course. She's in, it, 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 it's an animal's mouth. It's in seawater. So as of this point, she, you know, she's on, uh, she'll, she'll be on antibiotics as a preventative and we'll watch the wounds carefully, but certainly there's a high risk that they'll get infected and we may need to do some more treatment with that. Have either of you ever treated a shark bite before? No, I've not. Yeah. Well, what was it like uh, when you saw this come in? Uh, it was impressive. It, we're, we're a trauma center. We see trauma every day. I haven't seen this type of trauma, but a bad wound is a bad wound. On a scale of one to ten, because we're not doctors, how would you describe how significant was this among the worst injuries you've seen when you compare it to, say, traffic accidents and things like that? It's it's a, it's, it's an immediately life-threatening injury. We see some pretty bad. Uh, in any trauma center, you're going to see some pretty bad injuries. Doc, could you describe it one more time the way you did about how big it was and you showed us with your arm? Can you describe so, that one more time? Go ahead. Uh, it's very obviously a mouth. You can see individual marks from individual teeth. Um, it involves the upper posterior chest um, involving the ribs up here. The part of the arm that's involved is up by the, by the uh, shoulder. Um, and it goes all the way down to the part of the buttock. Um, and involves the pelvis down there as well, um, and both in the back and in the front. Has any have any experts come in to take a look at the wounds, the wetsuit, anything to try and get an idea of how big the shark is? If so, what have they told you? No, not yeah. What about use of her arm? Uh, can you talk about recovery? How long she may be expected to be hospitalized? That kind of thing. Um, remarkably, right now her nerves are all functioning. I was pretty surprised to see that. Um, especially given where the, uh, the wound is and um, I mean, there are actually teeth marks down the back of the bone in her arm uh, and also in her pelvis. Based on where the bite is, I'm amazed that her nerves are still functioning. Um, at this point, it's a significant wound and certainly at risk for infection and ultimately that's going to be what determines her, her end function, I think. Her arm, though, you believe that she'll be able to have use of her arm? Uh, it's much, much too early to, to make that decision. I think we'll know in the next week or two, but right now it looks good. How long is she expected to be hospitalized? It, it really depends on, on how she does over the next several days. Um, she certainly may need to be brought back to the operating room for more uh, cleaning. Of, of all the wounds, just depending on how they progress. Mm -hmm. Is it like a week, a month, six months? <clears throat> Probably a week. A week. You know, you mentioned, I know, I know you guys aren't experts and, and you're, you're looking at the bite. You see, said it looked like one large bite. Um, 
Wait, was it just a, a, a single curved row? Can you kind of describe it, or was it multiple, like, like, what, 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 your best guess? If you wanted to draw what a wound from a shark bite would look like, that's what it looked like. Just one big bite. Like a half circle. The reason I ask is because we have a lot of baby great whites that are like six to seven feet long. Their mouths aren't that big. Um, and that's what's in the area generally. So I'm, I'm curious. And not a lot of large great whites have been spotted in this area, which would have a mouth that big. There are other sharks in the area too. But that's why I've been probing on this to try and get an idea of what, what we might be dealing with here. Can you describe kind of her state of mind, how she's doing now? Uh, she's clearly a survivor. Um, can she's, you talk a little she, bit about she, that, she, please? She seems like a very strong lady. She's, she's remarkably calm. And uh, yeah, we both, we both. The, the words I was going to use were she is remarkably calm and matter Composed. of fact about the entire thing. Sure. Uh, the patient, uh, Mrs. Korchmaros, uh, indicated that during the incident, what she recalls uh, is that she recalls experiencing one bite uh, at the time. Uh, again, uh, I'm just sharing with you what she disclosed. Uh, she recalls experiencing. Uh, some of you, some of you, had asked that question, so I, I just wanted to make sure that you all knew that. Yeah. Dr. Sorry and Dr. Rudder. Dr. Rudder, you were in the operating room, correct? Correct. Okay. Can you describe at what was happening as she was brought in? Is, are there multiple surgeries going on at one time? Who, what takes precedence as far as is it the arm? Is it the lung? What, what's going on? Uh, uh, we have a saying, it's life before a limb, so uh, the hemodynamic stability of the patient is the first and main priority. Um, I was working with Dr. Lane, who is the, uh, the trauma surgeon on call, um, and uh, the arm was kind of the last thing that we dealt with. So the biggest concern was what? Chest. She had, had wound, wounds in, in her chest, which extended to the lung and, and also uh, almost to the heart. Doctor, sorry, I, and I know this seems like we're asking the same question over and over again, but one more time, if you could just describe and how you were showing it earlier, uh, that bite, and, and what your initial reaction was when you saw it, and it's your size. It, the, it, it looked big. It looked like a big bite. Just yeah. Extending from the, from the shoulder area down to the pelvis. So just that big half circle all the way yeah. down here. Yeah, and, and you can see the individual lacerations. Um, couple inches in, in, in length that if you wanted to draw out a picture of a bite, it, it, it's kind of like what it would look like. And did it look where? From, from, from the shoulder down to the pelvis. So your belief it was a big shark? From what you I'm, saw. Not, I'm not a marine life expert. Well, let me Do you ask guys you have that. photos that you're going to consult with a marine expert to find out the information? The, the, as, as, as part of the treatment, there's photographs taken, and those are part of the medical record, which um, patients and the size release to the officials they can. I know you're not an expert, but did it look like the shark had a big mouth? Uh, again, it goes from here to there. I'm trying not to get pinned down. <laughs> <laughs> can you describe again when she was brought in, were you surprised that she was able to speak? And, and I know you talked about her excellent physical condition. Um, you know, someone who's bitten in yeah, this no, I'm, way. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very surprised with, with, with what her vital signs looked at that time. Uh, I'm very surprised at, at her composure now. Um, and from what I hear uh, uh, from Phil, you know, who's there, um, it's just, uh, she's a strong lady. You know, she's, a, she's a trained athlete. How long was she turning water before she got out? Uh, that, I, that I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it probably seemed longer than she'd like it to be. <laughs> And so someone had applied a tourniquet, obviously a life-saving measure. Had they not done that, do you, do you think she would have fared as well? Can you talk about that? Possibly not. Um, as part of the military experience uh, uh, in the recent past, all paramedic units in the, in the county um, have the, those tourniquets that they quickly put on. They're well trained to, to apply them. So patients now almost consistently come in with those tourniquets. And yeah, they're life-saving. Do we know how much blood she lost? Uh, hard to tell. No. Did, does she require? Did she require transfusions? Yeah, she, she, she's required transfusions, and, and, and uh, may continue to require some transfusions. 
Um, given what her vital signs were, it probably wasn't more than 40% of her blood volume, but short of that, it was probably significant. Yeah, so 40%, just in layman's terms, how significant is that? Well, that would be three liters or thereabouts. So I, I, would, I would estimate she lost at least a liter of blood, given her injury, a liter or two of blood, just given her injuries. And, and can you talk about the coming days? What, what sort of treatment is she getting, and what are the concerns, if any, on the part of uh, all of you? Uh, wound care, pain management, uh, prophylactic antibiotics, nutrition to start healing the wounds, uh, beginning the rehab process. But at, at this point, that's a little bit more down the line. At this point, it's just uh, watching the wounds and make sure that they're, that they're healing well without signs of infection. The first week is, is critical. Um, this is a go-to trauma center in Orange County. Can either of you recall the last time that you had a patient coming in with a shark bite? No, I've been here 16 years. This is the first one I've seen. Do you uh, foresee her getting back to her triathlete, uh, running another triathlon? Um, being a triathlete myself, I, I'd like to say we're tough and that, yeah, mm -hmm. I anticipate she'll, she'll get back. I'm sure she's motivated. Does she need any psychological help after this? Is there um, any, you know, psychiatric treatment that goes along with enjoying something like this? Sure, there can be, and that'll be determined later. And we talked about the wetsuit that she was wearing. How might that have helped her? Dr. Rudder? Water is, uh, is cold right now. And, uh, you know, from a, just from a physiology standpoint, it kept her from becoming more hypothermic than she otherwise would have. So in terms of protecting her from the bite, I don't think it made any difference. Uh, in terms of keeping her warm uh, as she was going into shock, it certainly made a difference. Was there anything else about the bite, any evidence of the, of the shark, whether it be teeth fragments, anything that, that, that I know you weren't here, sir, but Dr. Rotter, did, did they notice anything in the operating room? Uh, we looked very carefully for teeth in the wound. Um, actually, someone called in while we were in the operating room to make sure that there were no teeth left behind. Um, there were no teeth left behind, but there are teeth marks on her pelvis and also on her humerus. So there was some hesitation to actually come out and say that this was a shark attack. Um, it sounds like it was pretty apparent early on. We're, it's been two days, you know, why is this just now coming out as being confirmed as a shark attack? I mean, I think we're all under the assumption that marine biologists would have come in and they need to determine, but it sounds like you guys knew right away, right? No, we're, we're, we're part of the medical team taking care of her injuries. The, the marine biology aspect of that is, is going to be dealt with by other agencies, by other people. Right, but you guys knew early on, right? I mean, was that translated to the agency or, you know? It you just know, seems like there was a little hesitation to call it. Uh, we're going to let yeah. outside agencies, we're going to let the authorities make that determination. Okay. Our concern is around the care of the patient. And but that was sure commu that communicated taking. pretty early on with them. Right? Yeah, we, we've said from the beginning that the bites are consistent with that of a shark bite. Okay. Uh, and we, can't, we weren't there. We didn't witness it, obviously, so we don't know exactly what it was. But it. uh, it's quite, looks like it probably was. Uh, but we'll let the authorities confirm that for you. And, and just to clarify, Jeff, uh, as a matter of protocol, and those of us who listen to the police scanner all day long know that when a patient is being brought in and paramedics are clearly treating that patient on the way to the hospital, what sort of information are they relaying? I'll let our trauma surgeon talk about so that. So when you're, when you're waiting for a patient to be brought in, you know, at the highest level of trauma, what are those uh, paramedics, what sort of information are they giving you and what are you asking for? Uh, basic demographics of, of the patient, sex, age, um, mechanism of the injury, and uh, a rough physical exam, uh, and then um, vital signs. And can you please share with us what was relayed as this patient was being brought in? Um, what was the information you were getting as you were awaiting her arrival? Yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't in the trauma at that point, so I can't speak to that. Dr. Ryan? I arrived after that point as so. well. Okay, but Jeff, yeah, I, yeah Jeff, I, I don't have those statistics for you or that data at this time. But, but your doctors, that they knew that there was a shark bite victim coming in. Yeah, potential shark bite victim. Of course, you know they're not seeing it until the patient arrives, so they're only hearing what's being reported to them. But obviously, they were, I'm sure, given substantial details or as many details as were needed over radio. 
it was designated a critical trauma, so that's the highest activation level for the, for the trauma team. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a surgeon, an anesthesiologist, um, uh, at least two, three nurses, uh, multiple therapists, uh, uh, techn technologists. And how soon after she arrived here was she in surgery? Was it immediate? Not immediately, but I think within an hour or so. Uh, not immediate. She was hemodynamically stable, and, and we did have enough time to do CAT scans. Um, sometimes if they're too unstable, you go to the operating room prior to CAT scans, and she was stable enough that we did do imaging first. And what did the imaging show? There were significant injuries to the, to the chest, to the pelvis, um, to, the, to the lungs. Any more questions? Thank you.